<laughs> Online, we have Adrian Back, Amanda Headthorne, Ann Hughes, Cheryl Hartman, Chet Krauser, Chris Lounsbury, excuse me, Erica Grinde, Kyla Leonard, uh, Lauren Ryan, uh, Melissa Fisher, and M. Pat. In 206, we have Commissioner Slotnick in Bureau. We have Ann Hughes, Karen Hughes, Curry Powers, Amy Bristow, Sarah Bell, Allison Franch, John Hart, and myself, Annie Cathy. You're welcome. Do we have any public comment on items not on the agenda? Yeah, I've got one, Commissioner Slotnick. All right, thanks, sir. Yeah, so this is um, this is something. Uh, it's a comment letter um, that uh, we've drafted for the commission to send to the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation, and this one is popping up in this fashion because uh, this is information information related to this decision that DNRC is currently currently contemplating came about pretty recently, and so we're trying to make sure we get the comment letter in on time for them to uh, incorporate into some of their decision making. Um, the the uh, subject matter for this comment letter is uh, regarding a application from a member of the public for a trapping license on the DNRC parcel in the Lolo area. Uh, this is um, kind of directly across from Lewis and Clark Drive and then it extends on both sides of the Bitterroot River and so it would uh, have the potential to impact recreation that occurs um, coming out of sort of the neighborhood there and Oral Zumwalt on the east side of the Bitterroot River as well as the community of Lolo yeah. that's immediately across the river on the west side. Um, these areas have a fair bit of recreational use including dog walking and so the letter is requesting that DNRC not issue a permit for trapping in this particular location and that would be uh, in uh, it'd be consistent, I guess, with the general approach that we've had conversations with land managers, management agencies about uh, where we have densely populated areas and dogs, et cetera, and placement of traps that there's uh, too heightened a risk of conflict and, and potential for um, accidental trapping of dogs. So that's the, uh, the gist of this particular uh, letter, and uh, we'll get it on an agenda later for you to uh, take formal consideration. Thank you. Uh, thanks for doing this, Chet. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I moved to. Oh, sorry, I'm just so far ahead. <laughs> That's how you like things. Uh, yes, I know it's true. Is there anything on the consent agenda anyone would like to go out and talk about? <laughs> Congratulations, Ken Marshall. Yes, congratulations, Ken. Thanks. Thank Ken. you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, okay. I still have any, uh, nothing I'd like to pull out and motion to approve the consent. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Hey, Lauren. Lauren, and are you? Are, oh, you're for the bot. You're for the. I'm from the uh, for the other. This is Lauren. She's. She's online. Okay. Good morning, guys. Um, I don't know. I don't know why my camera is not working. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you'll just get to see a black box. Uh, so it, our request is for um, a signature for the chair to sign uh, our CDBG grant application. Um, we are applying for funds um, to hire a firm to help with writing the um, existing conditions analysis for um, the housing section and the economic development section as we work towards updating uh, Missoula County's comprehensive plan and implementing um, Senate Bill 382, the Montana Land Use and Planning Act. And so the request today is for the chair to sign the grant application um, that we will be submitting on November 1st. Um, also in the packet that we are requesting the chair to sign um, is just a formal kind of part of the application that basically exempts us from any NEPA requirements as well. Um, so that will also be um, in the packet for a signature page as well. Um, and happy to answer any other questions you guys may have. You told us this yesterday, but I'm forgetting. When, when do you hope to hear back by? Um, I'm not sure, and I don't know if anyone else online or in the room how quickly they usually get back. The, like I said, the applications are due on November 1st, and I'm not sure the timeline on how long it usually takes to hear back. 
Um, Karen, I don't know if you know that at all or if in the past. I do not. Yeah, not sure. Hopefully, hopefully it won't be a super long process, but um, yeah, I can definitely try to find that out um, and let you guys know, but I'm not sure on the timeline there. Okay, no worries. Presumably it'd be within three months because they have another round opening <laughs> on March, March 30th or something. So awesome. thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. That's a good answer, Karen. <laughs> Thanks. If you have any questions, I'm excited about this and hopefully we get to move forward on the on calls. <laughs> <laughs> we should change that. <laughs> oh, I move to, uh, to approve the CDBG grant application. I'll second that. Any public comment? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda. Good morning. I'm here requesting that you approve the fiscal year 23 year end budget amendment. Uh, the primary things that are in this uh, amendment related to revenues are some changes on uh, the flow of funds for some of our revenues, such as the marijuana tax and the Missoula local government building rent revenue. Uh, we received a lot of funds that we were owed uh, this particular year from FEMA for COVID reimbursements, and we also received the opioid settlement money. And then uh, we got several reimbursements from DNRC for when we loaned OEM personnel or sheriff's deputies uh, to them for their needs. We also um, are updating the budget a bit to reflect the more specific amounts that we spent in ARPA and uh, that we received more than $15.2 million in grant funds, um, which includes the build grant, things for the Buena Vista projects, the nine mile restoration, uh, PhD <laughs> programs for refugee resettlement and rural healthcare access, the crisis diversion grant, and the drug free communities grant. <laughs> Uh, on the expenditure side, um, there are clearly personnel expenses related to a lot of those new grants that we received, so those are in there, um, as well as updated ARPA project costs. The um, Historical Museum at Fort Missoula uh, update to the barracks <laughs> is also in there, and then some of it is just uh, changing the flow of funds um, because we needed to do something a little differently than what we planned for it uh, as the year went on. Um, in places where we had overages in county uh, expenses beyond our planned budgets, uh, when I looked at those, they're mostly related to health care and prescription costs, both for county employees and uh, the folks that we take care of at the detention center. What was the amount that we received for the opioid settlement? Uh, $121,000. $121, Does that sound right, Amanda? It sounds close. Yeah, um, That's I more than I thought. Okay. Yeah. I just happened to be looking at the packet attachment. Good job. I think that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's all. all Good news, really. Money in, money out <laughs> for good things. I, I moved. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, any uh, go go for the moving. I'm moving. Moving the the board approve the fiscal year 2023 year end budget amendments. Any public comment? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess all I want to point out is that huge dollar total that came to us through grants. Way to go, grants! Fantastic yeah. people are writing grants who work for Missoula County. Take some credit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're up. Yep. So this is pretty basic and straightforward. One of our alcohol tax recipients, um, we found out after our contract was recorded, actually sold their business. Whoa. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> person who applied is the original owner of Guided Healing Trails, and they applied with their EIN and all of their information. They sent the contract for review, and they signed it, said everything was good, and then the admin sent us an email a few days later saying, oh, wait, we have a new bank account, a new EIN number, and a new owner. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, yeah, so that's what this uh, amendment is today is for guided healing trails. The person who now owns the business 
was a previous employee. So essentially he's taking over. They're maintaining the same work that they presented to us in their application and the use of funds will not change. And so the amendment states the new ownership and then it also states that the new owner agrees to the contract that we assigned with them. And it also states that the previous owner is signing over his responsibilities to this person. So the previous owner is still hired on as a staff. He has relocated to Nebraska. So I'm going to meet with him next week just to clarify the terms that he is doing. But the money goes only to Missoula County recipients. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks for navigating that. Funny and exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Following through. I move that the board approve and sign the amended um, fiscal year 24 alcohol tax fund contract with guided healing trails. I'll second that. Any public comment? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, and we are on Thank to you. Uh, discussion items. Everyone has a discussion items. So um, our meeting with the tribes um, is on Tuesday, November 7th. Um, this is the annual meeting for the land use memorandum of agreement, um, which is primarily focused on land use, but we often end up talking about all sorts of things at our annual yeah. meeting. So um, that we, it sounds like um, they have polled tribal council and we expect nine of the 10 members to attend, which is great. Um, and another um, five or so staff. Um, so we'll probably have a total of close to 30 in the room. Um, this is the list that Velda sent in terms of possible topics and just wanted to get your feedback on it. If there were things that were missing or suggestions. What do they mean so by HUD? I had one, but you see your shirt. <laughs> When they say a homeless shelter, what is that Johnson Street or what? I do not know. Um, so what? Here, so I'm just going to read these for the folks online. Um, they wanted to talk a little bit about climate change and resiliency, uh, Marshall Ski Area, and potential for future vendors' use, and maybe a little bit of information about the Marshall Management Plan. Um, Missoula County Growth Policy. There aren't any proposed changes, um, but we can talk about the the our intent to um, kind of move ahead with that project. Um, the MOA revision, we had to change the time for review for subdivision exemption applications. The MOA used to specify or currently specifies that they get a month for review and Senate Bill 131 doesn't allow that. So we've um, changed that. And they, they've seen the language and are fine with it. Um, and then, yeah, and then they had this, um, the homeless task force would like to know more of uh, their homeless task force would like to know more about the Missoula homeless shelter and future plans for affordable housing. I have Gary on, you know, and kind of to talk about, you know, and talk a little bit about affordable housing in general. I'm not sure I homelessness is not something that we've really ever talked about in this meeting, but that doesn't, I didn't know if you guys had any ideas as to where they were we talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't do that at all. Next on effective responses to short term homelessness and chronic homelessness. How we, we can just leave it with the, the council and the commission to talk about yeah, it. Just yeah, okay. yeah. That kind of seems like, and probably also around housing as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I can, I'll ask Velda a little more information about if there was something in particular she was, and the, the last bullet, or did, yeah. Um, energy. energy fleets and transit. Um, we've already provided them with, uh, connected them with mountain line. Um, and we can talk a little bit about the county's plans for EV deployment, which is mostly to let the MPO take the lead at this point and focus on urban areas. And as they get that figured out, we'll start to figure out what we can do in the more rural communities. Um, so that seems that seems pretty simple, and I guess uh, unless you had other ideas, we I do have Caroline available. Great, for meeting. I don't know that she'll be there in person. She'll probably be no. um, remote, but um, but she can talk both on the climate change and resiliency and the EV stuff. Um, are there other topics? Well, there's one on Marshall yeah. Mountain that I wanted to try out with you guys. Yeah, so, I just learned about this. I think I'm kind of late to the game. Huh? Things. Uh, I, uh, I, I will use the right language. It was a cultural use easement. 
So this is where an easement is granted for a specific activity uh, appropriate to indigenous populations and specific uses. So it, uh, people could <laughs> say, Juan would say they're going to, Ebrail is going to do a cultural use easement with the tribe. So tribal folks can go pick bitter roots or hunt during certain times of year. I just learned that these were happening in other parts of the country and wanted to, maybe this is something we could explore on Marshall. Maybe the vending doesn't look like the right kind of economic opportunity, but I had heard from elders when we were there that there were historical uses on this property and maybe that's something we could explore. Hmm. So they so, could, so what I'm not, I don't, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth and totally screw up, but just to speak generally, mm -hmm. not specifically, but generally, a use could be going to gather certain plants or hunting mm -hmm. at certain times of year or other culturally appropriate things that I couldn't even make up because I'm ignorant of these, but they maybe, maybe there's an opening here when we talked with the tribes about how best can we work with them around this new opportunity that is Marshall Mountain and Maybe this is an opportunity. Maybe there's a specific use or a specific use on a specific chunk of that <laughs> land that they would be interested in. And this doesn't require money. Sure. Yeah. And so, uh, like, okay, I don't like know. Like, instead of easement, so you can have an easement where you put utilities or an easement for where you let me walk across your land. This would be an easement where. Missoula County would say, we're going to grant an easement to the tribes to go get bear to do or whatever. this <laughs> activity in this specific area. They get to go there. Okay, but then the general public could not. Yeah, we would we would create something around that to protect that area. I, and I'm really nervous about getting into specifics because I know I'll get it wrong. But so this but then you're not going to do something like huckleberries, like, like, I guess, uh, Maybe I'm okay. I'm trying. Know, to, it may not be I at the try. at the exclusion of others. It may be just kind of an acknowledgement of an overt acknowledgement. And of I the, think okay. And yeah. I think something yeah. like like huckleberries on there's some greater. But something there. that might be something more like I mean, it could sensitive be picking, or medicinal or bitter roots or, or can and again right. I'm going to screw up because maybe bitter roots don't grow there and I just said the wrong mm -hmm. thing, but. There could be a specific use, a use that's specific yep. to that area that isn't uh, popular among the whole general population, but would be really exciting for, for the for the tribes. And yeah. we could say, okay, in this area, you guys get to do this whenever you want, and other people don't come in and do that thing during that time. Cool. And then only because I've heard of these in other parts of the country. And does CSKT have? these sort of easements I, I don't think anybody does around oh, here i just okay, have okay. heard about this and wanted to explore this cultural use easement see the more you more i get into it the more i'm not doing a good job no, no, here because no, it's, no, it's, no, it's a this is a, fine. speaking yeah, of the yeah, general yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I would doubt that they have any of these i don't think any of these yet exist in montana but i know they exist in other parts of the country specifically for indigenous folks to make use of of land they otherwise would be cut off from to participate in an activity that otherwise we wouldn't be able to do. Because I'm like, oh, I'm like, wow, we do have really great bitter root on the ranch, and I would love to be able to offer this. Yeah. Or and now I'm just, I'm, and I'm like thinking of, you know, um, <clears throat> maybe there is bear root or something in and Marshall when, Creek. That and when we were talking about talking with the tribes about oh, this property, definitely they were nervous like okay getting into a big economic thing or an economic development at the base that's there's a lot of risk associated right. with that do they co-management or co-ownership there's lots of risk and dollars associated with that as well and i don't know how appealing those things really are but maybe this might be appealing yeah because it isn't there's not a lot of risk associated with it <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it sounds like something we can explore. I'm just, I just pulled up a quick. Great. Ah, it. Someone going to the class. Thank you. <laughs> Cultural respect easement. Ah, so okay. the closest expression of land repatriation to indigenous people achieved without an actual transfer of deed. Mm -hmm. it offers assurance to us safely offers assurance to us to safely access areas of our ancestral homelands to exercise spiritual and cultural practices. Does that sound I, mean, I think it kind of takes it beyond like kind of the treaty rights, which they already have to maybe be more kind of explicit in some cases. John? Is that something you found in Montana? No. 
So uh, I think I would. I, I, that not, that maybe I knew I was going to get in trouble. <laughs> no, you're not in trouble. I don't think it's a trouble. Not use the word easement in the initial. Yeah, it would. It's because Montana has a fairly exclusive mm -hmm. list of the kinds of yeah. things you can grant an easement for. Um, <laughs> And this yeah. isn't on the list. This isn't on the list. Doesn't mean that we couldn't massage it into something that's on the list. Are there? I, mean, I haven't memorized. Or it. choose a different term that means the same. Yeah. Do you think maybe in the easement language there might be something but, like but, well, or specified activities? But I don't know. But you can still talk about some sort of you know special use agreement. Agreements. And we could call and we could call that a cultural well, respect you know, agreement. You just oh, just talk about it in super general terms. It's something we just do. We may just not be able to call it an easement. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk with and, Haley too. I'm sorry. She may have she may bit. be able to look into it a little bit. Then you guys will do way we'll know more than you right now. So. You're doing great. <laughs> Gosh, the other the, the other reason I wouldn't call it an easement. Generally, an easement is to a specific individual or individuals and um, not maybe like a community. It would be hard to, it might be hard to define everybody who, who would be justified in using this particular easement, even if it is the kind of easement that we could grant. Well, so now we're coming a little closer. Could you ask Kyla to research this a little bit and bring it up. Kaylee, Kyla, Kaylee, Kyla, Kyla, Harley. Yeah, there's, there's like Kylie, yeah. <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> and then you saw Kayla. Well, we mean our current and our past staff. We've got like all <laughs> versions. <laughs> so you know the person. Okay, Kaylee to, twice. <laughs> if she could uh, research this a little bit. Yeah. And, oh. and and maybe even get with John. So yeah, uh, John's got the list down. Yeah, the so lawyer in real time. I'm, I'm interested in finding the list. Yeah. Yeah, that, they're fun kind of things like a pew in a church yeah Whoa. oh there's an easement yeah. these are things from the 19th century like yeah, i told yeah. you before our property law is originated you know very strange yeah. essentially from yeah. you know the late 19th century and so yes you you can grant somebody an easement for a pew <laughs> a particular seat at the church you know, these kinds of fun things. They're, they're just fun things. I want, Someone's, I want to find it. It's, it's like long-term reserved seat. Oh, <laughs> it's like I only get this pew. Yeah, it's always for you. Yeah. Oh, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> families have their pew in the church. Oh, oh, I did not know this. I mean, I didn't know it was an official <laughs> reservation. I thought that, that was just where they customarily sat. <laughs> so, Kaylee can talk to John and yeah, yes, present this as a potential way we can. I think Kyla will schedule things. <laughs> yeah, Kyla is involved in the meetings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear she's working for you. Yeah, we're Sorry. getting working on that. We get her. We get her tell. Friday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll get to see her a lot, and we'll try and make the transition smooth. <laughs> and she's online listening to us talk about her. <laughs> I'll be talking um, with the boards and councils. I'm just saying. Yeah. So two other items channeling my inner Dave, um, Big Sky Passenger Rail. He often has like a little update um, sure. so I can check with him. And then um, possibly the wildfire program mm -hmm. might be mm -hmm. another one where there's some opportunities for overlap. Yeah, we do the wildfire program. It's just Tim. bring, bring Tim. Mm. Just I yeah. bring Tim and one of us talk for Tim. Mm -hmm. He's so, he did such a great job the other day. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it would be great for him to meet everyone. And yeah. Any other thoughts or ideas? When are we doing this? The seventh? Okay. The seventh. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, it's going to be over at the library. We'll oh, they're coming here. They're coming here. It's our turn to host. What are we doing for lunch? We're working on that. Okay. Kyla's okay. helping. library. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in the black. Oh, that's the one I was going to ask for. 
<laughs> we are. Sorry, this is Kyla. We're in the Blackfoot room. Nice, nice job. job. See, she's so good. <laughs> Do you have a lunch preference? We've been. I just want yeah. to be good. What's bigger? Bigger? Yeah, the salads are good. The pizza's good. That sounds great. Okay, yeah. we can do that. Is that representative of Missoula? Uh, yeah, sure. I think it yes, is. It is. Yeah. He's a he, he's a very community minded fellow. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Anything else? For. Okay. Oh, thank you. So the, the two walls of windows and all the light that comes in make that really. Yeah. Oh, we're not doing. I don't. I think we've kind of gone past the gift thing. Did we receive a gift last time? No. Okay, good. We, we thankfully, well, that was a thing for a long time. It's becoming really stressful <laughs> for everyone, I think. And I think we moved past it. I think occasionally if there's an opportunity that comes up, like they did the blanket for the Sophie, you know, and Sophie Moise, and I think we uh, gave them back uh, something that had been with the Historical Museum. So those, when they're, when those opportunities more naturally arise, those seem good. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've we past the gift thing. Gifts are very stressful. <laughs> One opportunity. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right, cool. I think we're all done. Oh, um, 